Walmart, a retail giant, has been going through rough times. The current economic situation has pushed the sector to its limits as the rising prices are forcing consumers to spend less. Walmart is one of the centers of consumerism in the U.S., and its underperformance may play a massive role in the American economy. So in this video, we have researched five fundamental signs that Walmart is on the verge of collapse. But before jumping to the first point, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. That way, you'll stay informed of the most important economic trends in the U.S. Without any delay, let's get back to the topic. Number 1. Sour Outlook Walmart had a cautious outlook for 2023 and predicted lower-than-expected full-year earnings due to consumers' tight spending. The retail giant warned of potential pressure on profit margins as the U.S. Federal Reserve may raise borrowing costs to cool domestic demand. This could lead to an economic downturn in the second half of the year, resulting in higher U.S. consumer prices and more expensive rental housing and food. Walmart CEO Doug McMillan expects stubborn inflation to have a mixed impact this year, particularly in dry grocery and items made for immediate consumption. McMillan expressed his dissatisfaction with manufacturers' desire to embedded more prices hikes. However, Walmart needs to maintain its competitive pricing strategy to increase traffic in its stores even though this is impacting its margins, according to Eric McNew, portfolio manager at Summit Global Investments. HSBC Asset Management has predicted that the United States will experience a downturn in the fourth quarter, followed by a year of contraction and, ultimately, a European recession in 2024. According to the British banking giant's asset manager, many economies are currently experiencing recession warnings, while fiscal and monetary policies are out of sync with stock and bond markets. Despite some parts of the economy remaining resilient, Joseph Little, the global chief strategist at HSBC Asset Management, stated that the balance of risks points to high recession risk now. While Europe is currently lagging behind the United States, the macro trajectory is generally aligned. Recession is on the horizon. Thus, the main question is how Walmart will deal with the upcoming recession. Number 2. Inflation Despite the high inflation, Walmart managed to attract shoppers and increase its profits. Due to inflation-related exhaustion, shoppers opt to buy groceries at Walmart while reducing their non-essential purchases at other retail chains. In May, Walmart reported a 7.4% increase in sales at stores that have been open for at least a year during the latest quarter, as compared to the same period last year. Additionally, the company's operating income rose by 17.3% last quarter. Target and Home Depot sales were dragged down despite better-than-expected profits due to consumers' reluctance to buy big-ticket items and non-essentials. However, executives also warned that rising interest rates and student loan repayments could affect consumers in the second half of the year. Walmart CEO Doug McMillan acknowledged that jobs, wages, and disinflation are helping customers, but added that rising energy prices and tightening lending standards mean that household budgets are still under pressure. According to Walmart, shoppers are feeling the impact of high food prices, which are putting a strain on their wallets. While inflation may have slowed, average prices for groceries are still high making it difficult for consumers to purchase what they need. During an interview with Yahoo Finance Live, John Rainey, Walmart's CFO, noted that while prices may appear to be decreasing, customers are still paying more than they did last year. In fact, Rainey mentioned that food prices have increased by 20% over the last two years. Consequently, many customers are becoming more selective with their purchases of larger items, such as electronics, TVs, and apparel. Current situations suggest that customers' purchasing power is being affected and retailers like Walmart are making changes to adapt to this new reality. Number 3. Shoplifting Crisis Retail theft has become a severe issue for the whole sector. CEOs of America's largest companies cannot hide the problem anymore. 
In March, Walmart announced the closure of its final two stores in Portland due to disappointing performance, leaving around 600 people without jobs. During an interview at Walmart Shareholder Week in Arkansas, Walmart CEO Doug McMillan emphasized the need for external assistance in addressing inventory losses, now costing the retail industry a staggering $94.5 billion US dollars in losses. McMillan pointed out that the measures taken to combat this issue, such as increased security, might lead to higher prices across the retail sector. However, he also made it clear that retailers alone cannot solve this problem. A combination of efforts from various stakeholders is necessary to resolve this issue. In April, Walmart announced plans to close half of its stores in Chicago. This is a reversal of the retail giant's high-profile commitment in 2020 to expand in the city as part of its corporate racial justice initiative. Retail theft has gotten so bad Walmart is building a police station inside an Atlanta store. Yes, you heard it right. A police station inside a store. Atlanta City officials have announced that the upcoming development project in Vine City will feature a police department substation for the first time. This move is aimed at reducing the risk of theft and violence in the area, which will be of great benefit to the low-income community. Number 4. Fierce Competition It is unsurprising that Walmart operates in a very competitive field. Its primary competitor, Amazon, tries to win the position of the largest retail company in the country. According to Forbes, Amazon beats Walmart in a race for digital growth. The pandemic resulted in massive e-commerce growth for Amazon and Walmart. However, this growth has started to level out recently. In Q4 2022 and Q1 2023, Amazon's e-commerce revenue dropped slightly compared to the previous year. For the whole of 2022, Amazon's online sales incurred a loss of $2.7 which is a significant drop compared to its profit of $33.4 billion in 2021. On the other hand, Walmart saw an increase of 17% in digital sales during Q4 2022 as compared to the previous year. However, Walmart is cautiously optimistic about the growth due to inflation-based price increases. It's important to note that both Amazon and Walmart offer digital membership services. However, Amazon Prime's annual price keeps increasing, making it more expensive for its 160 million global members. Meanwhile, Walmart Plus membership has stalled at around 11.5 million, indicating that the company needs to do more to add value to its service. Despite these challenges, Amazon remains on top for B2B with its Amazon Web Services, which makes up a significant portion of the company's profits. In terms of customer satisfaction, Amazon beats Walmart. Amazon is known for its culture of customer obsession. Amazon product recommendations and personalization are unparalleled. 35% of purchases come from recommendations. Amazon also offers expanded grocery and product delivery options, including garage delivery. Lastly, supply chain and logistics are where Walmart lags. As fast and reliable shipping is defining characteristic of Amazon service, their same-day and next-day shipping options for Prime members have set the standard for other e-commerce retailers. Walmart has taken a cue from Amazon and started offering one-day shipping Additionally, Walmart introduced Express, a two-hour delivery service, in May 2020. Walmart has made significant efforts to automate its supply chain and order fulfillment processes to ensure fast and accurate service. However, despite Walmart's efforts, Amazon still leads the back regarding supply chains. Number 5. Poor Employment Walmart has faced employment issues due to its reputation as a low-wage employer. As a result, their employees have been unionizing to demand higher wages. Ten years ago, the fight for $15 movement was born when fast food workers in New York City staged a strike, demanding that the minimum wage be raised to $15 US dollars an hour. Many large companies have voluntarily raised wages to $15 or more in recent years, providing hourly workers with a multi-billion dollar boost. However, Rick Wurtzman, the author of a new book, argues that corporate America still pays workers less than they deserve. 
using Walmart as an example. He suggests a federal intervention with a new national minimum wage of 20 US dollars an hour, almost triple the current level as a solution. This proposal is rarely discussed. Although Walmart employees saw a pay increase starting March 2nd, their minimum wage is still lower than that of Amazon, Costco, and Target. In 2018, Amazon increased the minimum wage for all its employees in the US to $15 per hour. Following Amazon's move, Target also announced in the same year that it would raise its minimum wage to $15 per hour. In 2021, Costco joined the trend and declared that its employees would receive a minimum wage of $17 US dollars per hour. In the end, it'd be hard for Walmart to attract employees with lower wages, which will only exacerbate its poor condition in the long run. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and let us know what you think about this subject in the comments section below.